um, the, the bully switches bodies with her victim, and the victim journeys like through the bully's perspective. So the victim has to find a way to reverse the switch. Um, it's at the point where she, I'm going to read an excerpt where she's um, in therapy. The doctor seemed a bit exasperated. He must have felt the conversation was going in circles. He wasn't getting anything concrete out of me. He tore up his notes and started from scratch. I can understand that, but now I presume you've accepted help. You must open up your darkest side and express yourself to the fullest uh, to benefit from my services. I mean, give me 100% of yourself that Hamilton required. I remained silent. The hour was drawing near and Hamilton wasn't getting anywhere. I can merely conclude from the little time we spent together that you have a low self-esteem. But that doesn't explain completely why you tried to kill yourself last night. So far, you have only vented about being sexually frustrated. Is there anything else you can tell me? Hamilton paused, tapping his ballpoint pen against a pad of paper. I've got to find out more about you, your inner being, he restated. My eyes wandered <coughs> over to the framed painting on the wall behind Hamilton's desk. It was an impressionistic portrait of a young, scared child cradling a puppy in her arms. <coughs> guarding it as though fearing that someone malicious may take it away from her. I identified with her. As I gazed into the painting, I spoke softly. I heard a voice. Voice, Hamilton raised his eyes in a tree. Voice from where? From within me. It was calling, my, it was calling me by her name. Whose name, Hamilton asked with increased enthusiasm. Jessica Wheaton. Who's she? My eyes followed the contour of the frame, not once looking over Hamilton. She's a dreamlike phantom who has been haunting me for the longest time. She's possessed like a devil. She won't leave me alone. She's the root of all my problems. She stole my identity and tried to destroy me with hers. And I know who I really am. I must never forget it. Who are you really? I looked at Hamilton straight in, in the eyes. I am the real Jessica Wheaton trapped in Denise Bauer's body. The doctor had a lump in his throat. Perhaps I had said too much. I waited for a reaction. He cleared his throat that continued on as if unsurprised. He must have thought I was a real head case. I hoped he believed me. This devil you named, he stuttered, why do you think she wants to hurt you? Because she's jealous of me. She comes from a dysfunctional family, so she robbed me of my good fortune. She took away everything I worked so hard for, I asserted, teary-eyed. And she's the reason you try to kill yourself. The doctor wanted to clarify. That's in a nutshell, like an anxiety attack. I need, to, I need to escape from my body. My body needs to be switched back to Jessica Wheaton. I don't, I don't like this new life I'm living. I need the stability Jessica had. I miss the closest of my peers, my parents. The only thing I have going for me is Kevin. And what good is he? He won't give me pleasure. That's what keeps me alive, pleasure. Kevin thinks caring about me is good enough. But I cannot love in this state. I can only feel physical pleasure. I thrive for the physical, you see. I can't grasp love anymore. I learned that love is a lie. I'm stuck with these feelings because they are now mine. They were hers. The truth is that I am my enemy self. So, I guess you're right. I hate myself. But if I were Jessica, I would love myself. Not in vain, I assure you.
we have Claudette Bard coming up and then Donna Bertling.